Hello, this is Craig here, and I wanted to go over all the recent enhancements for the MFAL, MFA Lite version underwriting model. This is now version 1.26. On the right of my screen are all the enhancements and changes that I've made, and I'm just going to walk through them one by one in this file on the left. So first off, um, I wanted to make it very clear that the compatibility for this file, it only works in Microsoft 365, uh, as well as Excel 2021. And the reason for that is there are several array formulas that are new for these versions of Excel that are really quite awesome. Uh, and I use those quite a bit in the file. Uh, another change is that there are a couple macros in this file now. Uh, I tried to avoid macros, but they just make my life so much easier. They're very simple. Um, there will be another video on how to enable macros if you receive a warning when you try to open the file. Otherwise, um, we'll just step through tab by tab. Start with the underwriting model tab. In the purchase assumptions, I've added uh, the acquisition date. Uh, I use this a little bit in the GPR logic tab, which is new. We'll go over that. Uh, but this is an a feature that will be utilized quite a bit in the advanced underwriting model. Uh, I've also added uh, dollar per square foot calculations throughout the model. So you can see those represented here. Uh, I also added this operating reserve. So whatever you type in for your operating reserves, it will calculate how many months of year one pro forma expenses that represents. Uh, I also added the sale information for your sale year. So the, the price, price per unit and price per square foot, so that will adjust as you adjust your exit year. Let's see, renovation assumptions. This is a big one. I added an interior renovation start month. The previous model started all renovations in month one, but as we know, that doesn't always happen in reality. So now you have a better ability to pick your start and end month for your renovations. Again, the model is going to use those dates and the number of units to be renovated, and it will linearly roll those units from the in-place rent to renovation vacancy to post-renovation rent. And I have a tab that illustrates that logic. Uh, also, we have per square foot calculations here in the renovation cost section. Really big change in this version is the unit mix and interior renovation strategy. First off, uh, we have in-place rents now. Uh, this doesn't affect the underwriting model whatsoever. It's more so as reference, uh, but it's really nice. I like to track in-place rents. So would we currently receiving today versus market rents? What could we receive for that exact unit type today versus my renovation strategy? What could we receive if we renovated that unit today? So it really allows me to get better clarity and visibility into my business plan. How much of it is a loss to lease play versus how much of it is a renovation play. And you can see that in the totals. Here we have the GPR for the in-place rents at 1.8. We have market rent at near 2.1. So that's about a 250K loss to lease annually. And then we have our post-renovation gross potential rent of 2.33. So it helps me, it gives me a little more visibility into the renovation and business strategy. Also, um, I eliminated a couple columns to make room for this. One of those was the renovation column. So now I've got a checkbox. If you check the box, it designates this unit type as already have been renovated. Um, one other thing I failed to mention at the top here is uh, I've created a lot of videos like this. They're all listed on the disclaimer tab, but it's not always clear which section it pertains to. So now I've included these logos right here. See in the top right. Um, anywhere you see that, you could click on that and you'll see a video tutorial. In this case, it's for the deal assumptions section. Uh, quick underwriting. I have a video tutorial specific to that. I have a video tutorial specific to unit mix. So you just click this button to view that video. Um, okay, that is it for this tab. Those are the changes.
we'll move on to the summary tab. Okay, in the summary tab, not a lot changed here. I did include um, a really specific line here talking about the exit assumptions, uh, the, the price on exit, price per unit, and the cap rate on exit. Uh, these are all already visible in the model, but I figured it would better be better to be calling it out on a separate line. Uh, again, I have a video tutorial link up here on the right for the summary tab. I've simplified the $100,000 return projection before I was showing the preferred return, which was uh, a little bit misleading because you get a big pop at the end. Uh, so now I've broken that out. I'm just showing the projected cash on cash return, uh, cash on cash distributions based on that return, proceeds from sale or refinance, return of investment, and cumulative return. Now, if there is a preferred return deficiency, that will be captured in the proceeds from refinance and sale. Next change is in the rent by unit type graph. Now, what we're looking at is the in-place rents, the dark green. The medium green color is really the delta to market rent. And then the light green color is the renovation premium that we expect to see and then the total rent for this unit type. Factoring in in-place rent, essentially your market rent or your loss to lease, plus your renovation premium. Okay, um, I forgot to mention one thing on the unit underwriting model. I did include a macro here, clear unit mix. If you click this, it's gonna clear out all the data. So just an easy way to reset the table to make room for inputs. Going to the T12 tab, I also have a clear T12 button here. Uh, this is essentially gonna clear out all the T12 data and all the mappings so that you don't have to, you could just paste the new T12 in here, map it and get going. Also the video tutorial link here. New tab in the model. So at the bottom, we have the required tabs. The underwriting model tab is the only required tab in this workbook to underwrite a deal. T12 model is optional, but helpful. And then I have these optional tabs off to the right. So the market analysis, which already existed, but two new tabs. One is the GPR logic. This is intended to illustrate the process the model goes through for rolling units from current in place to a renovation vacancy to a post-renovation rent. And that is really visible up here in the graph. So I put this graph together that graphs everything in this table. So if you wanna see the actual data, uh, you, you can follow it here in the table. Uh, I have this button for hide unused rows. If you do that, it just collapses all the blank rows so you can see a little bit of a tighter view. For my, These are all my renovations. These are my existing units in place. And then this is the aggregation for that to get to gross potential rent. What I want to show you is the graph. So the dark green color, these are those units that are not renovated. The light green color are our renovated units, and then the reddish color is our renovation vacancy. So as you can see, we have four months here where we're not renovating any units, and this is in line with our renovation start. So we're going to start on month five. So the model in month five, it's gonna take the first set of units and move them into a renovation vacancy, which is this reddish area here. And in month two, or sorry, month six, it's taking additional units. And you can see it takes two months, and this is a hard-coded value. It's taking two months to renovate a unit, and then our first set of units are rolling back onto the rent roll here at the post-renovation rent. And so this process takes place and you can see our non-renovated units are declining. Our renovated units are becoming a bigger portion of our gross potential rent. And then eventually our renovation vacancy goes to zero at the end of our renovation period. And what I've done is I've graphed a baseline. So if we did no renovations and we escalated rent, 
this is what it would look like, this dash line. But by renovating units, we're able to increase the gross potential rent up to this higher level. So that's the logic that the model uses for you to see. Okay, deal evaluator tab, new tab. So the intent of this tab really is we get a lot of deals that are submitted to us and it's hard to jump into underwriting. Um, and oftentimes the underwriting is incomplete. So this is intended to uh, evaluate the underwriting for a completeness. And then it has a lot of anecdotal questions to think through before submitting a deal or just as a good practice uh, to check all the boxes so you know if the deal makes sense. Um, very few inputs on this tab as far as data is concerned. Just additional information around the property, what MSA it is, when is the call for offer date, uh, what is the property type, asset class. Uh, and then this is the completion checklist. So what this is doing is it's looking at your underwriting and it's making sure that you have your in-place income done, your year one income, your year one expenses are filled out. It's looking at a lot of the questions below to see what questions have been answered for completeness. And then it has a couple high level KPIs, right? Just to kind of compare in place versus year one, this gives a pretty good sense for the business plan. Like what's happening, where are we at? When we take over the property, where do we expect to be at the end of year one? And then this is strictly a summary. There are no inputs here in the rent interior renovation summary. It's summarizing from the underwriting model. It's summarizing uh, by bedroom. And then there's a simple rent comp analysis. So what happens here is this will dynamically adjust depending on how many bedrooms there are up here, the unit types of bedrooms. So this would be my one bedroom rent comp. I would look up three apartments, provide this information, very simple, and it's going to compare it against the apartment that was underwritten. And there are some graphs down here that are hidden. So the one bedroom rent comps, it showed me the rent comps versus our one bedroom and where we uh, line up to the average. And if there aren't any rent comps, it's just gonna be blank here. So a simple rent comp analysis, just to make sure we're we're dialing in the rents. And then the bigger section, biggest part of this are the uh, questions. So there are a lot of deal summary questions. I'm not going to walk through all of these, but just questions to get you thinking through what questions to ask the broker. Uh, have you put together a business plan? Have you thought about the roofs, hot water heaters, parking, et cetera? Um, expense ratio information, how do you determine your taxes? And then have you gotten a financing quote? Have you gotten a property management quote and insurance? And then really high level demographic data that we tend to look at. So it's just one additional step to think through the underwriting and make sure it's complete. And that is it. Like I mentioned before, there are videos, a lot of videos, I've integrated those links throughout the underwriting model. Hopefully that helps. And if you have any questions or need to reach out, feel free to click this button and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching.